All right, well, welcome back. I know it's been a while. I have been away, but I've, I've been under the hood in the FM editor, uh, editing my database. So I've been away for a while. That is a, has been a lot of work. I've also just been busy, you know, regular life, uh, that kind of thing. Gets in the way sometimes, right? So I've also been trying to hammer out some issues I was having with the um, my video creating stuff. Um, I'm sure if you've followed the channel at all, you know that in the past I've had some sound issues. And once again, I did because I barely know what I'm doing here. So, but um, here's where I am. After I finished my latest update, I once again re kind of restarted and followed the same path that I did. Uh, I started with the Emerald Force, one NPSL South, I think, then moved on from there because they exit the NPSL in year two, as they did in real life. And I got the job at Brazos Valley once again. I actually kind of lucked out. Their coach, David Gutierrez, won the league. They won their in the Mid-South, USL League Two. And then he got hired by Miami United, so he moved up. He took a step up to what is now a well a professional team in the database they'll be playing in the NPSL Pro. So that opened up this job, and I took it with Brazos Valley. And it's been kind of an experimentation process. I've been, um, with the Emerald Force, I took the club that I had in the beginning and really didn't even look to sign anyone because I knew it wasn't going to be there long. The only, I only signed one scout and I just used him to look at look look at the upcoming opposition. And so he would prepare reports on that. And I didn't scout for any players, didn't sign anybody. I got to Brazos Valley and again I was taking over for the defending champions of the Mid South. So it wasn't like I was taking over a, a haphazard team languishing in the bottom of the table. So I had a good team which allowed me to have a little margin of error when trying to improve that team, trying to go looking for new players, building a squad, which is a challenge in the lower level in my database in American soccer, which my database, I, it's, it's all real. Um, the, well, the goal is to make it as realistic as possible. <laughs> so, so um, for the first season, I had to try and figure out how do I bring players to Brazos Valley? Yeah, I, I can't because it's a it's a semi pro team. They don't in the transfer market. They don't work like a professional team. I can't just go and and a trans you know sign a transfer and then offer him a contract. The only kind of contract I can really offer basically is part time. I've and the reality is that any player that I buy anyway, they're gonna reject me. No, none of the players want to relocate. They don't want to. That's one of the messages I always get, right? If I even if I when I had a transfer offer accepted, I'd offer a contract, and they'd say I'm not willing to re relocate to your area. Uh, and, I, and I got that a lot with free agents, players who were, I guess, based further out. Um, same thing with signing players off of other amateur teams. They if they were if they were too far from my club, they weren't going to relocate because my club wasn't good enough right and so i even went to a lot of the academies in the local area in my local area and a lot of the responses i got in that first season was your club is not does not match my ambition so a lot of these guys i guess they're you know they're 15 16 year old kids they all think they're going to mls so they don't want to sign with the usl league two team so th that was the struggle i had in the first season so we'll go to we'll look at my club transfers, my transfer history. We'll go back to 2019, and, and you can kind of see. So if, all right, first thing, April 1st, those are all guys that I did manage to sign, right? I, I managed to get a, and look when you see the Houston Regals Academy, uh, they they had about six or seven players. I offered all of them. Well, there was a couple from each team that I could tell was not going to be any good, but I I offered all and only one. For accepted from Houston Regals, even only one from my own academy. I offered uh, to KD 1895 Academy, and only one player from the whole squad agreed. So that was a bit of a struggle. Did get a couple free transfers that my scouts brought me. And so then when I only bring in those five, which I still had a pretty full squad, but I, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to bring in to build my squad. So I said, let's try and loan in guys, right? Let's see if anybody will loan me players. I started with the Houston Dynamo. They are my parent club, which 
really it's in in real life the Brazos Valley is kind of the Dynamo U23. It's not the same dynamic as everywhere else in the world, but it's basically that's sort of how it works. So I went to the Dynamo and I went to basically everyone that was on like a reserve contract. I think which when I first made these offers, I think the Dynamo had like I mean they had a pretty full squad. But it was like 12 to 14 guys that I tried to get in on loan. <laughs> Only, which the Dynamo they they allowed all they did not reject any one of my loan offers, but only two agreed to join me. So they were important players: James Duffy or Jesus Duffy and David Schultz. Duffy is my is my starting keeper. Schultz is a starting center back, and so they they came. <clears throat> and when I only got two, I said, "Well, okay, let me go around and try and and get some other guys." So I went. I went to third division clubs, which American soccer, MLS, obviously is the top division. Then you have USL championship. And I went to the third division. This Cal FC, I think is in PSL pro Atlanta FC is in ISA North Texas is USL league one. So these are all third division teams. <clears throat> I probably, I probably offered 50 guys on, you know, and some, the uh, the clubs wanted me to pay part of their salaries, but most of the club that's I don't know I, probably about half of those that I offered, the clubs agreed to let me negotiate, but only those three players right there accepted my loan offer: Ben Campbell, Clooney, and and Besaint. Um Campbell and Clooney played that first year, but they are now I'm pretty sure I let them both go back to their club. Um, Besaint is a, a Haitian who. Um, he doesn't have any caps, but he does have U21 cap, so that's kind of interesting. Actually, he got called up by the Haitian national team once, well, the under 20s. So, um, so that's what I looked at, and so that that was my struggle. Um, just finding guys. What I kind of ended up having to realize is that you know what, I'm gonna have to pretty much take whoever my scouts bring me, and that's sort of what I did. I just started if I would go to the scouting page, and there won't be anybody there now, but. I would go to the, where is it, scouting. And if there was somebody there and they looked halfway decent, I would offer, I would offer a contract. Then I would go to their assignments, which I've, I've got a chief scout and I've got one guy who's looking at next opposition. And I would go to these reports, right? And I would see who's, if anybody was there um, that I would want to sign. And so that was, that, that kind of became my process. And um, then when I also kind of realized, so I didn't have a lot of luck with the academies the first season. Um, I'll explain it like this. So this is how the, the signing players from the academies would work, right? What I came to realize is that I've got a region, right? I've like, my, there's this circle around my academy or my club, right? And the only, any player, who was at an academy outside of that region would always tell me, I'm not going to relocate to you. And so what I had to do is just go around to all the academies inside that circle and offer to players. And finally, at, for whatever reason, the first year, maybe my, maybe my reputation, maybe because of the club did so well, which we'll look at that in a minute. But for whatever reason, um, they in the second season, 2020, those guys started accepting my offers. I brought in four guys from my own academy. I brought in guys from the from the Dynamo Youth Academy, which I'm trying to think of the best way to explain that. That's not the Dynamo Academy. It's like a secondary club that signed a deal with the Dynamo in real life. But so I got a guy from there, uh, Houston FC's Academy, the Houston Dutch Lions Academy. So that really helped bringing in all those guys because those guys are most of those players are first teamers for me now. And we'll see what they've been doing. It's been mostly successful, which is good. Um, did even bring in a guy from a local university, Phil Bartlett, who doesn't play a lot, um, but he's there. And then uh, Alan Laughlin from, from the Austin Sting Academy. So that's kind of where I am now. I, I, I've, I've sort of settled in. This is how I'm going to have to build my squad, right, in the, at this level, which is challenging because, you know what, you're not going to always be able to get the guys that fit you, that fit your team, your system, your club. 
So you're going to have to get what you can get and sort of make it work. And the reality is that's pretty realistic for clubs in League Two. Um, most of these clubs, they have tryouts, right? And that's who they get. Um, they do loan in players from universities unfortunately that can't i've not really been able to make that work in my database i wish i could but that's really the, the purpose of usl league two and the npsl is a place where college players can play more get more games more matches without losing their amateur eligibility so they can still play in college so that's frustrating but for the most part i think it's pretty realistic for this level and so let's look at what that's done, kind of done for results so in 2019 a lot of wins but these are a lot of 1-0 wins my team was not good at finishers they we hadn't we didn't have much problem in possession in shots and whatever chances created but we didn't finish a lot um, one thing you'll notice is this guy I had a video where the sound didn't work and it really frustrated me, but this is Val Valdenai Dor Dornell. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He's um, he's American, but he's also partially Brazilian, so he's, he's dual nationality. Mostly useless, right? You can tell. He's a winger that can't dribble. He also can't really pass. But one thing he is good at is free kick taking, and that is like the only thing he brings to the table. He, he literally does nothing during the run of play. But when we get a free kick close to the area, he takes it. And he, last year, got multiple goals. Let's see, did he score in this one? Yeah, so he gets a goal. These are all free kick goals. We won't watch them. I don't think we can because these are last year. But free kick goal against in the um, in the league opener. Um, he got a free kick. I know he got one... Yeah, okay, he got a free kick goal in the, in the Open Cup match we lost. Right, um, but then, well, so keep that in mind, right? Dornell's a free kick specialist, literally the only thing he can do. You look at most of the rest of our results, pretty close, but, you know, we won. And we, we, we didn't lose a game in, in League 2 play. We got into the playoffs. We really controlled these matches semi in the conference semifinal against Weston. Only came away with a 1-0 win in extra time. Then we played Sarasota again. Mostly dominated the match, but we only got one goal because my team really stunk it. Like this guy Trujillo, he's probably oh he's not he's not disappeared yet. He was my striker. He was my number one striker. He had a five at finishing, but he was the only guy I had. He was like my only striker. I had a couple, but he was the, my best player at the striker position. So then we roll into the semifinal. We play two teams that are way better than us. I wouldn't say way better. They're better than they had better players. And we grinded out a result against TSS, and then we took Thunder Bay Chill to penalties, and we won the penalty lottery. So we won USL League Two. That might have helped sign players for this year, but this year has been a lot better. <laughs> the players I got has have made me a much better team, and you see that on the field. So three nothing in our first league match 4 nothing against Houston had a little trouble with Mississippi Brilla but still got away with a 1-0 win the HFC Royals they scored first but then my quality took over Houston FC again beat them 3 to nothing 3-1 against Texas United 2 nothing against Corpus Christi and in the last match 6-0 and this is another one this is I really wish that video had worked um, we'll look at these goals. So this is uh, Darnell's. Darnell's. I can't. I'm, it's embarrassing. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Again, mostly useless. He can't do anything <laughs> except. Ooh, uh, I've got my. Oops. I have my FM speeder on. Let's try that again. Mostly useless, except for that. Puts in one free kick goal in the 82nd minute and then a 90th minute free kick goal just to kind of rub it in a little bit. He has, for me, he scored six goals. All have been free kicks. Where was his other one? Let's see if we can find his. Those are two. He scored three this year. Did I skip it? No, nope, here we go. Pretty sure. It's going to be embarrassing if this was a goal in the run of play, but I, I really doubt it. He never 
Yep, free kick. He has a he had a fifteen in free kicks, which for our level, like look at him again. I think I pulled him up, but we'll we'll look at it one more time. <clears throat> yeah, fifteen free kicks. So so he's um mostly useless, but he, he get you know he's he, he he you put him over the ball near the near the box on a free kick, and he's gonna he's gonna challenge the keeper, and so. So yeah, league play we're we're way out in front, right? We've eight no, got maximum points from eight matches, ten point lead on the team who's next. So we've pretty much we have six to play, but we've pretty much locked up the division. Now one thing that a lot of fun I think for teams at this level is the Open Cup, right? So the Open Cup last year we had a decent little run. First round we knocked out Little Rock. And then we knocked out a USL championship team. That's the, uh, Memphis is a second division. Uh, Putris Schnell got a goal. And we, we, we kind of had to hold on for our lives, but we did to make it to the third round, which was pretty, that's pretty good for a team of our size. And then Reno knocked us out two to one and deservedly so. This year, um, we got further in the tournament proper, but the reality is, is that the competition is a little different. Like, so first of all, we start off with Laredo Heat. They're a team actually below us. They're a level below us. So we won that, and we should have on a, a hat trick by David Wilcox. Then we play the St. Louis Lions, who are in the USL League 2, so right at our division. We get a 2 to nothing win, and then Atlanta FC comes in. Atlanta FC is a third division team, so they're one division above us. And we absolutely ran them off the field. It was a mostly... See if we can still see the stats and such. We pretty much dominated. I changed my, the way I play. I'm normally in kind of a possession team. But in this one, I dropped the back line. I dropped the line of engagement. And it really worked brilliantly. They, um, they struggled. Now, they also had... I had been rotating my squad. So my first team played this match. And they hadn't played for a week. Atlanta FC had played, I think, two days before. So they had a short rest, and they tried to play a lot of their first-team guys. And I, I, I've i heard people say that condition doesn't have anything to do, this doesn't have much to do with the quality of play in FM this year, but I, in my experience, it can be a big difference. And it wasn't this match. They, um, they had a guy sent off also in the 55th minute, so that helped. I scored three goals that, after he went off. And then they had a guy injured after using all their subs. So I got a late goal uh, because of that, probably. So, uh, but then we played Phoenix, and yeah, they were the better team. Um, tried my adjusting my tactics again, but this time Phoenix was just too good. They scored at the 14th minute, which I didn't make any changes then because I was kind of hoping that, you know, we could keep it close till we get to the second half and then last 20 minutes or so come at them and that's what we did but obviously didn't work didn't create a couple good chances but phoenix won and deservedly so and so um now i'm able to focus on league play like i said my first team has been playing in the open cup because i I like to make those runs and so that's what i did and you kind of have to rotate at this at this level if you look at my schedule like look at these so the ninth and 10th, I played a game on the ninth and then a game on the 10th. And then I had an open cup match. So then after that crazy week, uh, I, the very next weekend, again, 16th, turn around, play the next day on the 17th with an open cup match on the Wednesday. Then that next Saturday, I had a game on Saturday and played the next day on Sunday. So, but now the schedule is finally normalizing after that crazy congestion early on. Another thing, if you notice, in league play, I've only had one home match. Well, my first six were away, which is just like insane. Six of my seven away matches were played in those first six. So the good news is the rest of the way, I'm, you know, seven of eight, seven of my late eight, seven of my last eight league matches are at home, which is good, especially since I got maximum points out of the first, uh, out of the, all those away games. So, um, which you hear all that and you, th- you think that's crazy, but that is kind of how USL League 2 works, right? There's a lot of weekends where they play back-to-back, and it's it's partly because they've got a shorter time to fit those matches in. 
so that's kind of what they have to do so this is kind of realistic I try to make my file as realistic as I can one real quick look at something I did with the file to make it a little easier I don't know if any of you follow it at all but I took all of the college conferences and put them in one competition so for example it's well this is you see America East um, American Athletic Atlantic 10 it's all if we go to stages you can see them all so these are all of the of the conferences <clears throat> and I also did the same thing with the conference tournaments and once again you can see them all here and the, you can see the and it and awards the trophies the way it should gives gives the championships to each conference and each conference tournament so that just kind of makes it easier to navigate the the competitions in the file did the same thing with the USL League 2 by the way so I think that really helped to clean it up and one other thing I did and I want to show this I added 3d kits to all of the professional teams so the top three divisions all have a 3d kit so when you go into the match for example we'll go look at Las Vegas lights uh, let's see what's another crazy team they can we'll just look at um, home match against Reno Reno 1868 and the Reno's are just basic white black but get a pause here you can kind of see the detail in those kits which like right here that's how that's their kits in real life and there's details on the back that look the same um i don't know it makes me kind of a nerd but i i don't know i like the detail on that and, and that it's that way for all those <clears throat> usl championship and division three teams as well and mls same thing with that all the mls teams have 3d kits that match what they have in real life so that's kind of what i've been doing with the final um let's go ahead and do a live com i guess i think it's funny to call it live com because i'm recording it you're not going to be watching it live it's kind of like the disney disney right now is doing those live action remakes of their cartoons but it's not live action it's it's just, it's still cartoons it's just like computerized cartoons so but we'll do a live comp so you guys can kind of watch how my teams play <clears throat> see the squad that I've built on the field and I'm gonna go with my positive set I think it's the second one yeah go a little more positive a little more aggressive since we're at home playing against a team who is kind of below us Last game that really worked out, we played the Houston FC and easily dominated. I'm also going to watch this in the director camera. I prefer data analyst so I can watch it up high. I mean, hey, I'm kind of an old school FM gamer. When I first started playing, I had the, it was the 2D match engine, and I just preferred it because I could I could see it. You know, I could see how my players were moving how versus how their players were moving. It was easier to read things tactically with the 2D engine. still kind of is. But the data analyst view gives me kind of the best of both worlds. I can still see it sort of as well as you can in 2D, the player movements and everything. But you also get the 3D player details. So, But for this, for the live comm, because I did have somebody, I think, in a video comment that they prefer it this way prefer it a little more higher up so so we'll, for this we'll do it this way and if I take a loss I take a loss but now I'm uh, I'm in a good situation in the league so I don't I'm not too worried if I drop some points here and you know, we're peppering the goal just can't put anything away that's kind of the story of my team is we uh, we we struggle finishing like this is the first match so my striker which I'll show you in a minute um, Wilcox Wilcox in the beginning started the season as my number one choice uh, striker he was he was my number nine and in the open cups he was scoring like crazy he scored a hat trick in the first match I think you saw that then he gets a brace in the second game he scored all he scored our first five open cup goals and and then he would get a couple more so in the open cup he has seven goals which is still the highest scoring uh, the most goals for a player in the Open Cup, which, you know, the MLS teams haven't entered yet. Um, the USL Championship teams have only played, like, one. So <laughs> it's not crazy that he's the league scorer so far. But 
for me, it's, well, I thought he's just going to be Mike's goal scorer. He, he can, he's going to put things away. Even He only has a finishing of five, but I thought, well, maybe his other attributes, his other attributes aren't that great either. But he's, my assistant had, you know, had, he was the highest rated. Right? I think my assistant had him at four stars. But he's not really been scoring. And so this is the first match where I started my number two striker, Bone. Uh, he, Bone has a 12 in finishing. So the hope is that he'll start converting more of these chances. Now, even though my strikers don't score as much as I like, I've been getting goals from other places. Wingers, midfielders, set pieces. So defenders came in and scored. I haven't looked at my goal scores, but I think it's pretty balanced. Uh, one kind of interesting story I'm wearing, you might see, a uh, top of jersey for the Charleston Battery, which I, I um, Mrs. Mrs. and I went on a little vacation to Charleston, just a couple of days, visit, it is on the beach, and you know, there's a couple of cool little historical sites there. So we took a little trip, mini trip, for a week trip, and <clears throat> we got there on Monday, and so... De La Rosa with a goal on a free kick. He's my uh, number 10. So, um, as soon as we get there, we get, we, we get into our room, and I, I pull up a computer, and I'm like, oh, yeah, let's let's see if the battery are playing. Because they're a, the battery are a USL championship team, so second division. But maybe they got a midweek game. It'll be kind of fun to go watch. So, I look, and lo and behold, they have an open cup match at home against Atlanta United on that Tuesday. So, yeah, it was a Tuesday. So, I'm like, we're in. I bought the tickets. I'm going to go from Watkins, who's my winger. Again, my strikers don't score as much as I like, but I get goals from everywhere else. So, so we get these tickets. <clears throat> we get to the stadium. The first thing I do, I go to the gift shop. I buy a jersey. Just, you know, I kind of, I'm not like a battery fan, but, but you know, I want to kind of immerse myself in the experience. It's cheer for the underdogs. You're getting ready to play the defending MLS champions. So, so we get the jersey, and we come walking out of the concourse, and the last speaker comes on and says that the game has been postponed. <laughs> so the game was not played, and I thought, well, hopefully they just rescheduled it for the next day, but they didn't. They, I think it was like a week or two later. And after, they, after I heard the announcement, I walked down to the field, and I looked at the field, and you know, there's a goal from Bird, the left winger. Wingers and my attacking my number 10 midfielder. <clears throat> the replay here. I see, like, right there, Bone was my striker. He made the he made the final pass, so can't complain too much. So I walk out of the field and I look, and I've heard good things about the field in the past. Like, I've heard that they have one of the better fields. And the stadium was nice, right? It was small, like, I think maybe sat five or six thousand. But I look at the field, and it is absolutely terrible. Like big patches of dirt, uh, uh, well, and multiple big patches of dirt that they just kind of covered with sand. And well, the weather wasn't great, but it wasn't when we walked out of the concourse. It wasn't even raining. There was no thunder, or lightning, or anything. So um, it's pretty clear that what happened is the Belvoir went out, saw all that field, and told the officials, like, "Yeah, we're not doing this." <laughs> and so. Uh, I guess I don't know that that's what happened. Ooh, they got a chance for that in there. But if I had to guess, that's the United refused to play in those conditions. And they were poor, to be fair. So, but I got the jersey out of it, um, which is, you know, kind of cool. Okay, we need to do Yeah, that's goal from HFC. We need to focus. Um, hmm, it's all concentrate. Yeah, we're kind of farting around. They're not really coming at us anymore. We're just, I think we're losing our focus. Which, that's another thing that my team is susceptible to. It is, um, and that's a rating thing. You can look at my guys and they all, you know, concentration is, a, is an issue. But we, uh, we'll play really well for long, for part of the game. And then we'll have these, like, five to ten minute stretches where it's like, we only have four guys on the field. 
Here we go. Put something together. Now, um, something I'm going to do here in a couple of minutes. I'm going to rotate. Um, I'm going to bring in, start bringing in subs. USL League 2, and this is the rule in real life. They have six subs. That you can use six of your seven bench players um, as, as substitutes. So I do that because I have a big squad. And because fixture congestion is what it is, I rotate a lot. Try to keep as many guys. I still feel there's a lot of guys getting mad because they're not playing as much. But, but it's, it's kind of about a necessity. You know, when you've got that congestion, like you guys saw, you only have to have three teams. Um, and I I do. I've used, I can't. So you can register 26. I've got 30 players, 31 maybe. And I've registered and unregistered so that they all have, have played at one point or another. And so um, rotating you now helps them to hopefully help some of them to not get overly upset. And there's a bonus problem. It gets complacent. Um, yeah. So, so I rotate a lot. And you'll see that here. Bring in Woodbury for De La Rosa. And, well, let that be the only stuff for now. I get six. So usually about the hour mark, I start bringing them in. <clears throat> oh, nice, nice. Head over to the middle, just couldn't apply the finish. Oh, oh Schultz. Oh, there's a bone. It must have ricocheted off of a bone. Let's see the replay on this. So Jackson pulls it from back here, lays in the middle. Yeah, it went off Schultz's head, it looked like. <laughs> so Bone gets credit for that goal, but he really did his he accidentally scored. Kind of remind me in the Gold Cup recently. Who was it? Um, let me concentrate again. Um, who was it? That? Zardes. Yeah, Zardes, where Cross came in, and I think the keeper punched it or something. And the keeper, whatever, deflected off of Zardes' face into the goal. And so it was like Zardes scored by accident. That's kind of what happened over the moment. But you know, they all count. So, so we got a nice 4 1 lead. We can start bringing you guys off. Uh, Watkins is looking out. Now he's confident all of a sudden. So I'll leave him out there and bring in Hancock. And we'll let that be all for now. Game's kind of dragging, but you can tell this. I mean, we're I've built a team, and my team is, is better than the rest of the teams in my in my division. It'll be interesting to see what I face in the playoffs. Last year in the playoffs and the conference, they really were not that great. I should have won by more than I did, but I think it finishing, which is even kind of still the case. <clears throat> and then when I got to the to the national semifinal, that was a that was where we played teams that were probably better than us. All right. So now I really need to start bringing in some subs. Oh, that's good. I put Woodbury in so that he could be disinterested. You idiot. Sub with my wingers. Maybe we'll get to see Darnell's get a free kick goal. That would be perfect. Make three subs. Alright, so we got a 4 1 lean. We got one more sub. I'll use it before time runs out. Um, let's leave Bone out there and I'm going to bring in this guy, bring Bartlett off. Yeah, see, like, HFC, they've not really changed anything their whole, the whole game. But they still have a goal, and they've... When we got our lead, we just we lose concentration. That's a big problem with, our, with my team. I use a shout, concentrate. And what you usually have is it does pull them out of it for a little bit, but then they just go right back in, like, right here. Here's, here we go with another attack. Hopefully this is just kind of, I'm going to win and maybe get a counter here. See, we're not sharp. Uh, 
But this will this will really kind of with my math. I did the math. Mississippi is our closest competition. If they win every match, they're going to be at 33, uh, 33 points. This will put us at 27 with five to play. So we would only need six. We need six points out of those last five to guarantee it. And the reality is, Mississippi is not going to win all five of their last, their last five games. See, like, we're just not frustrated. Maybe I should have changed something on the balance to pull them back a little bit, but you know, hard to argue with a four to one result, right? 20 shots, only uh, four for them. Although three of their four were on target, they, they made our keeper make three saves. So that's frustrating. And when he didn't, I mean, if he didn't make any saves today, we could have we only got out of here with one point. So, <clears throat> yeah, good result. So, guys, they did well. Please with the result. They always, it's always all green. So, you get to skip it. And we'll kind of look at where we're at. I'm trying to decide what I'll do in another video. I guess we'll see. I mean, I'm going to try and do, be a little more regular than I have been. Um, until I can see it well. But, um, yeah, we'll look at, let's, let's look at the schedule. Maybe I'll be back for that Mississippi Berlin game on July 4th, right? Independent Day celebration. Um, but, um, yeah. So, looking at the standings at the table, again, maximum points, we're at 27. We're almost doubled up on Mississippi Berlin. We do have a game, they have a game hand on us there, but I, you know, our chances are looking pretty good. So, if I can start getting ready for the, for the playoffs, I'll keep my rotation going. Like, in this next match against AHFC, I'm probably going to roll my second team out. i got to keep them fresh, keep them, keep their fitness up. Because you've got to have depth when you go into the playoffs. Last year, in the semifinal, the semifinal and the final of the conference were three days apart. And when you get to the nationals, okay, you get a week. But i got to keep my guys fresh, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep rotating. And... Then I'm gonna start. I really I don't want to be at Brazos Valley another year. I I really only wanted to be here the first year, um, but I, I couldn't get another job. I I thought I, I thought I had a good chance at the University of Michigan job, but by the time I applied, they, they gave me the message that the process was over. So I guess they had already sort of decided who they were hiring, and so I didn't get that. And no other good college jobs open, but that is I think the next step I want to take is go coach in the NCAA, try to build a program there. But for now, I'm here, and I'm trying to make the most of it. Get my coaching badges and all that. So next time, we'll um, yeah, maybe we'll look in a little more in depth to some of the changes I made in the database. But this will be Uncle Sam signing off. See you next time.